soil lifting with roots, some thick, some fine as hair, a sort of placenta. Loose dirt falling back to the ground, sweetness of carrot scent full in the air, crackle of paper bag as it was filled. Both are roots in this earth. Years later, I will sit within his room at the VA as he lies on his bed, eyes closed to the world, and wish we had talked. But listen, my senses were overwhelmed when I stood with him in the middle of my life on that land in Oklahoma, land his father had bought from the Choctaw. Hear the jackrabbit thudding across the garden, Cows in the pasture, heads bowed, lips to earth, pulling grass. Whippoorwills, unrelenting, call from the woods. Brush of a crow, crossing from pecan tree to apple tree. Water slipping over rocks in the creek. Silence filled with sound. Here, I knew everything. I had no questions. On this land, I am six years old again, bare feet busting hot clods of dirt following him on the same road, listening to the world. I wish he had been the dad that sat right down on that dirt with me, pushed back my hair, asked, how is it really going? What do you think about mostly? What is your passion, your favorite color? He was not. He was the dad that worked hard, never swore. He filled my paper sack to overflow with food he had grown, told me to be safe and waved as I backed out of the gravel drive. There's plenty of time. I think about these days, these things, as he lies on his bed in the VA, curled on his side like a question mark, eyes closed to all the empty places inside us. She steps out at the edge of the grove to graze where the grass is sweetest. Small against the stand of tall oaks and palm, her tawny shape sketched against evening's deep green. Ghostly in the diminishing light, high powdered with dust, she lowers her head to the grass. The sound of her foraging floats softly on the still air. She moves calmly, though predators prowl in the darkness behind her, lifts her head, looks to the forest, then back, her haunches quiver. All day, she has heard the sound of a new danger as machinery becomes familiar and close. Next year, where will she hide her fawn? One more little one, it's just seven lines, it's called a settling, sevenly. <laughs> Tie loosely. Tie loosely what you would keep. Tie with words, cupped hand, breath against cheek. A threat, a grasp, a bruising look will not bind. Only things gently applied, barely there, diaphanous, like light climbing through air. I'm Mary Lavelle, a member of Island Braggers for many years, and for today I went way back in my archives to a time when we thought nothing of jetting off to Central America rather than going over the bridge to see the dermatologist. <laughs> the only thing we could catch in the airport was the kind of hysterical laughter that people fall into when they're so tired. And when a certain orange person had not been elected president of the United States. <laughs> so this is uh, a poem in five parts called observed and overheard 
during a long layover at Miami International Airport. Watch. Nona and Poppy, in their 80s, sit by the windows of the top of the port restaurant with their very American daughter, dozing, sipping coffee, and attempting conversation in heavily accented English. It goes in fits and starts, complicated by Nona's deafness. Donald Trump got married again, says the daughter. Donald who? Donald Duck? Yes, Nona. The daughter snorts when she laughs. I struggle to maintain my pose of disinterest as they dissolve in fits of hysterical laughter. This contagion could spread a fast-acting virus. In the restaurant lounge, wicker easy chairs attract the weary, waiting, waiting. A woman with a fresh haircut, very chic, and diamond earrings, and barely suppressed her yawns. Her companion, jacketed in classic navy, is going under. His eyes become slits. His head rolls back. His jaw drops open. She shakes him awake when he starts to snore. <laughs> In a spot warmed by the afternoon sun sits a young goddess. One bare shoulder decorated with a tiny hummingbird, not quite hidden by her long black dresses. A rhinestone ring winks from one pink polished toe, and she wears two ankle bracelets, with one gold, one tattooed. <laughs> She studies the Kama Sutra as interpreted by Cosmopolitan magazine. <laughs> is interrupted when her cell phone plays its catchy melody. She's speaking of Romeo. I lean forward to hear more about her romance. Is he eating well, Mom? Is he happy? You can tell because he'll start to purr. <laughs> At one table after another, people talk intently on their phones, ignoring their companions. Next to us, he gestures broadly as he speaks faster and faster, <sighs> ever more loudly. She hisses, her eyes narrowing. Oh, I wish I spoke Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> the lunch crowd is nearly gone now. Waiters chat quietly in corners. The hum of their conversation and the quiet clink of china and silver fade to background. I've read nearly every article in yesterday's Financial Times of London, not usually my newspaper of choice, and my <coughs> eyes are beginning to swim. I feel my head drooping. Snoring could come next. <laughs>